So a lot of you have asked me recently after the last few videos how it actually looks to deploy FSX ONTAP in AWS. So I thought it would be best to jump into the computer and just show you guys how it all works. Let's go. All right, guys, so here we are in the AWS console. We're going to go over how to deploy FSX in a couple of different ways. Now, the very first thing you need to check once you get in here and get authenticated, make sure you've got the right IAM role, all of that stuff. You can find all of that in the documentations. I'll leave that down in the description for you. But the very first thing you need to check is your region. Think of it like an umbrella where you're going to be deploying resources. You need to absolutely, if you're new to AWS, you probably know this if you aren't, but if you're new to AWS, you need to, and frankly, any of the cloud providers, it's very region specific. So you can do exactly what we're about to do in any of the given regions, right? So I am going to be operating in US West 2 or Oregon, as you can see up there. Um, and you can see that I've been in a few things before, but if we go into FSX, you can see some test deployments that we've got there here. Uh, and we can do this a couple of different ways. We can do this manually, which is totally fine to deploy it that way. Choose FSX for ONTAP. Make sure you read over the notes here. Uh, click Next. You can do a quick create or you can do a standard where you go through and set all of the parameters. If you're, Unless you're doing like a super specific production deployment, quick create is going to get it done for you. So we'll give it a quick little fun name here. Nick, YouTube demo all right uh we'll just we'll throw the minimum capacity in there because we don't want the credit card bill to get out of control uh we'll choose our vpc which is our core uh and we can turn on efficiencies which i highly recommend you do no matter what whether or not it compresses and dedupes a lot is kind of irrelevant you really want to make sure that you're taking advantage of your storage efficiencies. Unless you're finding performance issues with it or you're not deploying enough resources, you're never going to have a problem with it. So always have it on because it'll automatically pick up and apply storage efficiencies to any data as it's added to the volume. So make sure you turn these on and enable that. Uh, we'll go next. We'll scroll through. You can add some tags if you want to. Uh, I highly recommend tagging. We're not going to do that. But if you're familiar working with any of the cloud providers, or VMware for that, for that matter, you tag everything so that you know you can search by it, you can find stuff by it, you can identify the ownership of it, all that stuff comes into play. And that's it. Create file system. Done. And it off it goes, and it'll take about half an hour uh, to get that done for you. It takes about that long to provision all of the resources, set everything up, install on tab, configure everything, yada, yada, yada. That's the quick create. That's the easy one, right? If we wanted to do the standard one, we can go through and we can see some of the more details that we can add into it. We can specify subnets. We can specify a standby subnet. Now, programmatically, these are set as defaults in your VPC. So when you in doing the quick create, you can just select your VPC and it'll kind of default to those settings. Um, but you can then set up endpoints. You can set up your security and encryption. If it's uh, AWS managed or if you're doing bring your own keys, you can do all of that stuff. You can set the administrative passwords in advance before it gets created. And then you can go through and sort of set your junction paths, uh, volume sizes, any of that stuff. It's not that much more detail, but just know that these are things that you're going to have to do after the quick create gets done in order to start serving data to your workloads, all right? Let's back out of that one. That's really the only difference between quick create and uh, standard create. Now, where this gets really fun is when we introduce our old buddy YAML into the equation, all right? We'll bring my YAML file over here and we'll bring it in and show you guys what this would look like uh, in real practice, all right? So instead of going to FSX, we're going to go to cloud formation here. Uh, cloud formation to deploy a storage array? Yeah. I did this as a fun little um, kind of a joke or something like that. Uh, uh, kind of memed it a little bit at the beginning of Cloud Field Day 13. I got an emergency phone call from Chip, if you guys remember, if you saw the presentation. And he needed an update. He needed a new storage array. So I just grabbed the template that we had standardized, as you can see in the YAML here. This is also available in the documentation, or I believe it's out on GitHub as well. I'll, I'll find it and leave a link down in the description for you if you want a sample template. But this is all the YAML, about 20 lines of, of YAML code. And you can create a stack, a cloud formation stack with new resources. We're simply going to use the template. We're going to upload a new file. 
Uh, we're gonna grab it off of my desktop, US West. We're gonna open that, it's gonna read it. You can view it in the designer if you want to, that's fine, it's gonna go through all the different settings for you. We're gonna click next, we'll give it a name, we'll go Nick YouTube Demo uh, YAML. Will it let me put, yeah, it'll let me put dashes in there, cool. Um, and we can add keys, so we can go, uh, let's see, demo is YouTube. We'll add that and we'll go owner, data center dude. All right, cool, that works. Uh, we can specify IM roles for access, all that kind of stuff. Don't need to do any of that here uh, at this time, but just know that you have those facilities available to you. Click next. We're going to review everything that it imported from YAML. It's got my tags in there. If you specified any permissions as part of the deployment, you can, uh, or the stack, I should say, you can uh, absolutely do that here. All of these settings are available. And then we're going to click create stack. So again, just like that, about three mouse clicks to deploy a fully functional on tap storage array in AWS. So there you go, guys. Practical example of setting up and configuring and deploying FSX ONTAP in AWS in a number of different ways. You've got a lot of options. Next video, we'll go over all the different options once you get it deployed after that first half hour, 35 minutes or so. Uh, and we'll go through volumes and SVMs and how to get to the CLI and all that good stuff. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on it. Thanks for watching. Take care.